Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We have already lost some of our heat from yesterday afternoon, and we're going to lose a lot more going into the weekend. Wait till you see the lows in your four zone forecast coming up. The billion dollar question has been answered. We now know who won that mega millions jackpot and just wait until you hear how much Uncle Sam is going to take out in taxes. But we're going to begin with Ford Field being turned into a massive hub for the coronavirus vaccine. The feds are stepping in and pledging to get thousands of shots into arms every day. Glad you're with us today at five. In just a matter of weeks now, access to the vaccine is also going to expand on a massive level. Here are the broad strokes. Starting on March 22nd, all Michiganders 16 years of age and older with disabilities or medical conditions are eligible. And then here's the big one. On April 5th, all Michiganders 16 years of age and older will be allowed to get vaccinated. We want to kick off our coverage with Sean Lay. He's live tonight at Ford Field with when that mass vaccination site is going to open, Sean. A lot of details to get to. We're going to spell it out for you. We are here. Why? Because of $50 billion, $50 billion from the American Rescue Plan going towards the federal government. Assign the job, get the vaccine out and get it to the people. So Ford Field is one of those sites. It'll open up March 24th. You mentioned a couple of other dates, but the Ford Field vaccination clinic begins March 24th. It is seven days a week, eight in the morning to 830 at night. But the sign up information has yet to be established. I'm told tonight that will be a state website that will go live in the coming days and you have to have an appointment. The local Ford defenders told you about FEMA officials touring Ford Field back on February 27th and then they made the call to make the home of the Lions a mass vaccination site. Today in fact I'm pleased to announce the addition of a new FEMA supported site in Detroit. Ford Field becoming one of 20 mass vaccination sites in the nation. Ford Field in the heart of Detroit, a COVID hotspot last year. Detroit will now help protect thousands against the virus. This site located at Ford Field, home of the Detroit Lions, has the ability to administer 6,000 shots per day. 5,000 shots administered inside Ford Field each day starting March 24th. A mobile vaccine clinic will take 1,000 doses into Detroit's most underserved neighborhoods. There is no cost, no insurance is needed, free parking. Who can come first? Michigan residents currently eligible, that's 50 plus with pre-existing conditions right now. March 22nd, 16 to 49 year olds who are disabled. April 5th, all adults become eligible. All county leaders in Metro Detroit say this move to vaccinate at Ford Field is huge as counties continue to struggle with state supply of vaccine still not meeting demand. We're fortunate here in Macomb County. We know we can handle more, we want to handle more, uh, but until we see that I guess increase in supply, we're going to continue to deal with this demand that's out there to try to figure out how do we satisfy it as best we can. Let's repeat the Ford Field mass vaccination clinic starts on March the 24th. It is an eight week program, so it's just two months. And I am told FEMA already has the vaccine to support that 5,000 on the inside and 1,000 doses going out to different neighborhoods coming up at six. Who will get the first slots to come into Ford Field once the state gets the appointment website up and running? Everyone hoping that website is able to handle the crush of people trying to get an appointment, guys. Back to you. Yeah, okay, Sean, exciting news. We appreciate it very much. Let's look now at today's coronavirus numbers and the backslide continues from the looks of it. 2,400 three new cases over the past 24 hours. Along with that, the state also reporting eight more deaths over the past day. Now take a look at the vaccine numbers. 3.4 million doses have been distributed here in Michigan with 2.8 million shots going into arms. The Ford Field announcement was certainly the highlight of the COVID response team briefing today, but they did cover some other important issues. There is a new push to protect children from COVID and other illnesses for that matter, and new steps being taken to make vaccinating adults easier too. More vaccine is coming, and now so are more people to do the vaccinating. The administration is expanding the pool of qualified professionals who will be able to administer shots. And so this list now includes dentists, optometrists, uh, paramedics, physician assistants, and many more, including trained medical and healthcare students. While there's no COVID vaccine for children yet, CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky urged parents to get their kids caught up on all of their other shots. 
CDC orders for childhood vaccinations dropped by about 11 million doses, a substantial and historic decline. As we work to get our children back to school, we certainly do not want to encounter other preventable infectious outbreaks such as measles and mumps. The CDC also announced updated guidelines for child care centers. Like other businesses and community services, many child care programs have been challenged in their response to the pandemic. The guidance stresses the importance of continued mask wearing for everyone age two and up, except when eating or sleeping. It strongly encourages child care workers and other staff to get vaccinated. Advice the response team hopes all Americans will follow. We need all Americans to get vaccinated as soon as it's their turn and to help your family and friends and neighbors get vaccinated as well. Now, by May 1st, the White House plans to launch a website and a call center to help direct people to nearby locations where the vaccines are available. They're also going to deploy technology teams to help improve state vaccination websites. The University of Michigan making a drastic shift with its plans for the fall semester. U of M announcing today most classes on the Ann Arbor campus will be taught in person. Residence halls will be open again at 80% capacity. Another big change, there will be fans allowed on the stands for football games and other sports. Officials say these plans are based on all faculty and staff that plan on getting vaccinated, getting to do that before classes begin on August 30th. Firefighters are working to determine the cause of a brush fire in Washtenaw County. Sky 4 over the aftermath of the fire on Lima Center Road in Manchester. Sources tell Local 4 over three acres and a building caught fire. We have calls into police to see if anyone was hurt. Well, yesterday's wind's still sticking around, but we've made it to Friday. And uh, even though a little cooler, nice sunny day again. Yeah, let's get over to Ben and see what's in store for us Saturday and Sunday. Hi, Ben. Hi guys, yeah, this is sort of the uh, pr the taste of what's to come as we get into the weekend, but I'll tell you those winds probably not helping firefighters uh, at that brush fire or really at any of their calls in the last couple days. The good news is the winds are going to subside, even though sustained winds are about 15 to 20 miles an hour right now. It's those gusts that are back and they're in the 35 to 40 mile per hour range. They've decreased just a little bit in the last hour and you can see as we get into the weekend high pressure takes over so the winds are not going to be a concern on saturday they may spike a little bit higher as we get into sunday maybe getting up into the 10 15 mile per hour range but still nothing like what we saw today and yesterday the next storm coming out of the rockies and you'll watch this system develop over the next couple days in fact sunday Denver is expecting over a foot of snow and that moisture is headed here. We'll tell you what to expect as we finish out the weekend when we see you again in a few minutes. Okay. All right, Ben. Warren police are investigating a deadly shootout at an apartment complex. Witnesses say the victim and the shooter got into a fight at the Warren Manor on 8 Mile and Dequinder. This was about 3.30 this afternoon. The two fired shots at one another. One person was killed. The other got away in a gray Durango. The car does have some damage because the getaway driver hit something on the way out of the complex. Family of George Floyd has reached a $27 million settlement with the city of Minneapolis. The Minneapolis City Council unanimously voted to approve the money as part of the civil lawsuit. It includes $500,000 for the business district where Floyd died. The Floyd family attorney calls this the largest pretrial settlement in a wrongful death case ever and says it sends a powerful message that black lives do indeed matter. After months of speculation, a billion dollar question has been answered. An Oakland County Lottery Club has claimed that one billion dollar Mega Millions jackpot, but they aren't taking all that much of it home. The group took the lump sum option, putting the grand total down to $776 million. Then you've got to take out $219 million in taxes, yeah. and that puts the group at $557 million. Divide that by four, and each member gets $139 million and some change. You know, it's probably still worth winning, KG. Uh, I think so. <laughs> uh, let's get to Larry Spruill live at the Kroger in Novi, where that winning ticket was sold. Larry? Well, Devin and Kimberly, for months we all have been wondering who bought that $1 billion lottery ticket. As a matter of fact, I was here at the store that day when we found out that it was at this location here in Novi. Now, tonight we know that it were, there were four members of a lottery group, but there are still a lot of questions tonight about their identities. 
Friday, the Michigan Lottery announced in this video who won the $1 billion Mega Millions lottery ticket. The lucky winners are members of the Wolverine FLL Lottery Club. Now, they purchased a winning ticket here at this Kroger in January, splitting roughly $776 million. The winners are still unknown, but the group's attorney spoke on their behalf. You know, this is a good group of people. Uh, I believe that they're going to do some great things and they're going to be good stewards with this with these funds. But there are still a lot, and I do mean a lot of questions. Like, for example, what is a lottery group? I asked several Kroger customers that very question. Have you ever heard of a professional lottery club? No. Have you ever heard of a lottery club? Uh, not besides the ones that you do at work just randomly. Have you ever heard of a professional lottery club? Never. I also reached out to the group's attorney but did not hear back. But here's what I found out about a lottery group according to the Michigan Lottery. It's required to start one when two or more people want to file a joint claim for a lottery prize. The group must create bylaws and appoint a representative like an attorney. And if the prize is more than $600, they must name all individuals of the group to the Bureau of State Lottery. And lastly, before getting any money, all members must be vetted for liability. And so as we mentioned, each member will take home after taxes about $139 million. Yeah, let that sink in. So I had to ask, I wonder what would you do with all that money? Well, I asked several Kroger customers that very question. I'm working on that part of the story on new tonight at six. We're live at Novi tonight, Larry Sproul. Local 4. You got it, Larry. We'll talk to you again at 6 o'clock. All right, we've got uh, much more to come here on a Friday. Let's check in with Nick Monticelli. A Wixom man accused of being at that insurrection at the Capitol, beating officers with a hockey stick, accused of, is now asking to be released on bond. The arguments from his attorney and his parents. Throughout the pandemic, we've tracked cases and deaths and recoveries, but one key group is saying they were left out of those numbers. Coming up, why disabilities advocates say it could have cost lives. The COVID relief bill signed into law, so many of you want to know, when will I see my stimulus money? Well, we have that answer and also important information that you need to know before that money makes its way to you. It's coming up in my Help Me Hank report.